It's neither of those things. It's race day. Hold on, legends. Thank you. What's up everybody, welcome to another video. And this one I am super excited to share with you. This is my race recap of the Cairns 50 Community Running Festival 10K. And the reason why I'm so excited is because this is the first race recap video I have done in over six months. The last competitive fast paced me going out and trying to give it everything sort of race was the Sydney Marathon back in September last year. So really, really excited to share this one with you today. Uh, going into the 10K, I set myself a ridiculous goal of trying to run to under 38 minutes, but I had absolutely no idea where my fitness was at. I just pulled that number out of the air and wanted to go for it. So with that in mind, let's dive into the event and see how it went. Now, the Cairns 50 Community Running Festival, it's a great event. It's This is its third year. A fantastic local event put on by a local guy by the name of Josh. I love it. I will be there every single year. What they've managed to achieve in that event is the perfect balance of a professionally run event, but also at the same time, retaining that family atmosphere and that community. Anyway, let's dive into my race and starting with, well, a lot of people are interested in the gear that I wear when I do these races. So here it is. So I was an ambassador for this race. So that meant I was wearing the race singlet, which was made by a company called Foa Co. Two times you compression shorts and socks. I love running in half tights. They're just so much more comfortable for me. It means thighs aren't rubbing. I'm, yeah, I feel comfortable in them. And these ones are just the best ones that I've got. Shoes were the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite. The reason why I wear those is because they're the, the closest thing to a super shoe that I own. They've got a uh, super critical foam in them, but they're fairly low stack height. And so they're not quite a super shoe, but they perform that role for me. And they feel light and fast and poppy but I feel like I'm still in control. So I love those shoes. I've put about 250 Ks into them now. So uh, probably only got a couple of races left in them, a bit more training and probably uh, in my next block, I'll probably have to look for another pair of shoes for the racing option. And last but not least, it would be a race for me without a pair of good sunnies. So anyway, let's get on to the race recap. I was really slow getting out of bed in the morning um, really struggled to get myself moving and of course was running late by the time I got down to the event. For the warm up I ran with my friend Jeremy and I went and did some strides and I knew in the strides that something just wasn't feeling right. They, I don't know what it was but I just didn't feel good in my body in the strides. But anyway, calmed down, relaxed, went to the start line and we hit the start. This race course, it's a two 5K out and back loops. You start on the grass within the park, you do a lap of the park, and then you run out on a concrete path for two and a half Ks, then run back. It's a course that I run every week, so I know it really well. So my plan at the start of this race was to go out at 350s and then try to bring it down after that to try and hit under that 38 minute mark. I knew that there was gonna be a group that would go out ahead. Um, I knew there were a couple of guys there who were quite a bit faster than me, and there was one guy in particular who I thought, I didn't know what sort of form he was in, but I thought I might have been able to stick with him. But anyway, they went out ahead and honestly, I got sucked into it. So I tried to stick with those guys and looked down at my watch and I was running 340s. That was well into the first K. So backed it right off, ran a 345 first K, but really I spent too many tickets in that first K. And that was noticeable because normally when I make these race videos, I'm talking to the camera. 1K to go. Normally I'll be telling myself to kick it down now. But honestly, just telling myself to keep jogging. But I didn't do that in this race. So that that shows me that I was probably putting in that little bit too much effort. Anyway, ran a, ran a 345 for the first K and then settled into that 350 pace for the next few Ks. To do that, the guy who I thought I was gonna keep up with, Brian, I had to let him go a little bit. Um, I had to just accept that he was gonna move away from me. Oh, there's a turnaround point at two and a half Ks back just directly 
stop, turn around. Nailed that, felt good, um, settled back into pace straight away, so no issues there. And I managed to run past a couple of people in that first 5K, a few people who went out too fast, I was just picking them up. So it was all, life was pretty good. Come in, came into the park for the first time, 5K turnaround, you go onto the oval, do a big loop of the oval, um, so that spectators can see you and cheer you on and stuff like that. And I did that and that was on a grass park. Now, a week ago, that park was flooded and then we've had sunshine ever since. So the grass on that park has grown ridiculously and it ended up being quite long. And being the first people through there on the day, it was still quite long uh, when we we're running through. That's my first excuse and I'm gonna stick with it. The grass was too long, that's why I ran slow. By the time I came around, I could see Brian in front of me and I thought, okay, cool, I'm, I'm sitting pretty good. Um, once I get back onto the concrete path, I'll be able to kick down just that little bit and nail the next 5Ks. As soon as I hit the path, I realized I got back into my gate and realized I had absolutely nothing left in my legs. Like they felt like they were gone then and there, uh, which was quite a shock. And mentally, I think I let go just a little bit. So I knew straight away that my race was over. But I thought, no, there's 5Ks left. That scared me a little bit. But then I went, no, just dig in hold on and just see what you can do. I then just battled on the next two and a half Ks. When you know your legs aren't there, five Ks into a 10 K race, getting to the seven and a half K mark can be absolutely brutal because there's such a long way to go to try and hold on when you're blowing up like that. I battled through to the final turn at the seven and a half K mark. I averaged four minute Ks to get there and I tried to hold on to the guy who was in front of me. He was dropping off as well, he was struggling too. So I just tried to stick with him and just do what I could. Got to the seven and a half K turnaround and I stopped dead. In that moment, the guy who I was trying to hold on to, I'd done some really hard work to hold on to him and even make a few gains, get to about 10 to 15 meters behind him. And I pretty much stopped dead around that turn. And I looked up and I saw he was 30 or 40 meters down the road already. And instantly I was angry and frustrated with myself, which was kind of good in a way because that switched me back on and I immediately kicked back down, got back down to pace and switched back onto the race because I was not gonna let that be the end of it. For the last two and a half K, I managed to kick it back down for, to around somewhere closer to the two, 350 mark that I was hoping to stick to. Last two Ks I finished with a 353 and a 356. I went past the guy in front of me and managed to get into fourth place. When I hit the finish line, I knew I was in fourth. I knew who was in front of me. I knew who was behind me. And um, I just crossed the finish line and the time to me was irrelevant. I was just glad it was over, let's be honest, because there's a big difference between pushing yourself when you are fit and pushing yourself when you're really unfit. And I was in that second zone when I was blowing up. So I was just glad the 10K was over. When I look back on the race and I think about it, first thing I can think about is, well, I'm, I wasn't in the shape that I'd hoped I was. And part of me knew that, part of me knew that going in, but I still was hoping I was fitter than I, than I put together on the day. That just tells me that I've got to get that little bit stronger. This 10K, it's harder than your average 10K. For some reason, every year, every time Josh puts on an event, it gets hot and it gets really hot. And that, on Saturday, that was no exception. We had high temperatures, full sun, really high humidity. So it was a tough 10K. Even though it was flat, it was brutal. And the other thing that I realized looking back on it is I wasn't race fit mentally going into this. This is my first race, like competitive, pushing hard in six months. And my mindset just wasn't there. I gave up way too easily when I felt that difficulty and that weakness in my legs in the at the 5K mark. I, I should have uh, pushed through that barrier a little harder. I, I allowed myself to uh, fall into a bit of a funk for a couple of Ks that I really shouldn't have and I could have done better with. But anyway, that's, that's something that I can get back just by racing more often and just putting myself in a position to hurt like that a little bit more often and that I know that I can bring that back. The big thing and the big learning out of this one for me and why I am smiling so much when I talk about it, even though it wasn't the best race for me and there wasn't an amazing run, for me this event was a turning point and it, it's really, it's been quite a huge event for me. It was less about my race but more about other people's race. For those of you who watch this channel regularly you know that 
this year I've started coaching and I've started taking on clients and working with people to help them reach their goals. And this is the first time I've ever had athletes that I've been coaching in a race and I've been able to see them and live the race as a coach, as someone who is invested in other people from a different way. And I've got to say the three people, there's three people in particular that I'm thinking of that I've done a lot of work with um, who have been to most of my weekly sessions on Thursday mornings and there've been stalwarts throughout it and watching them run and being able to be there when they finish, that's that's changed the game for me. I, I A lot of people ask me why I run and why I do this. And the main thing is that Running has given me so much and I want to give back and I want to help people develop the love of running that I've developed and get as much from it as I have. And and I realized watching those people, following them on the tracker and then being there when they finished their races, that meant so much more to me than my own race did. And seeing them achieve their goals absolutely made me feel a million a million dollars and uh, i'm really 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 excited by the fact that i get to work with people towards their goals moving forward and it was it was awesome absolutely loved it a shout out specifically to the three ladies in particular liz your selfie was awesome sue and rochelle being there to give you your medal as you cross the line was an experience that i will never forget so next steps for me well i know i need to get stronger so battling a few niggles and that's because of weaknesses and imbalances that i have so i need to just suck it up and do the strength work and make myself stronger that's next step number one. In terms of what's next on the calendar, I'm going to have a crack at a half marathon. I've signed up pretty much straight away. I signed up for the Cairns Half Marathon on Sunday night. That's in July. I've got about 14 weeks until that's happening. So I've put together a bit of a block. And the other one, over that 14 weeks, I've got to make sure I find opportunities to race more. Even if it is just a park run, I need to put myself in that race mindset and in that race uh, scenario where I've pushed a little bit too hard or I'm, I'm on my limits and where I mentally need to switch into gear. So I need to give myself that opportunity a little bit more often. So the race in the end, I don't think I've actually told you the time. I think I ended up doing 40 minutes and four seconds. Something else that was absolutely amazing on the day was I had a bunch of people, whether it was before the race or during the race, a couple of people, and even after the race, I was presenting medals and I had a number of people tell me, hey, I watch your videos, I love watching your videos. And to those people, thank you. Um, I'm still really awkward and shy when people say that stuff to me, so sorry for being awkward and shy and weird. But it's really heartening to hear people get value out of these and, and look forward to these and that this is, yeah, worth it for people. So. I really enjoyed doing it, so thank you. Thank you for watching, and thank you for coming to say g'day on the day. I had an amazing day. I really loved every minute of that event. So thank you, Josh, again, for putting it on. And thank you to all the volunteers who were there to help out, and thank you specifically to the Ignite crew who were there cheering me on. Um, There were lots of people in the race and in other races, and after the race, just cheering me on and being so positive. So loved every minute of that. Um, it's great to be a part of a group. I think that's all I have. Not the most successful day from a running perspective, but at the same time I learnt something about myself and that was really great. If you want to see how I go about training for the half marathon, make sure you click the subscribe button down below. Um, And if you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. We've got another training video coming next week. Bye for now.